Right, welcome to Renovate Innovate. My name's Mike and we're going to be giving you a tour of our YouTube studio and talking you through the equipment that we use. Right, so the plan for our studio was to make it look as much like a garage as possible. So that meant having a sturdy workbench in here, having some cool storage. The cabinets we got were actually X-Display, so they were a lot cheaper than buying them new, but they work really well in here. We don't keep too much in them. Uh, occasionally we'll keep fixings, fastenings, that sort of thing in here. But the real piece in the studio is this nice workbench. Proper sturdy, does get a bit of a hammer in. Any real large sort of projects we work on obviously have to be done outside the studio, but this is great for um, assembly, final assembly, smaller projects. I think we made the neon signs in here. As you can see, it's getting a few dings in it and things like that. Our studio used to be an office and there's still people working around outside of our little room. So we've put a on-air light outside. So that just shines and shows people that we're shooting a video in here and hopefully stops people banging on the door really and interrupting our videos. So when we took apart the old office room, we took down the ceiling tiles. There was no insulation above the ceiling tiles on this false roof so first thing get some insulation up there it'll help with sound deadening essential in the studio but when we took the old ceiling tiles down they were looking a bit tired so um, we sent them over to our friends at visual group and had them print a design on them could have had anything we wanted printed on the ceiling tiles but we chose a concrete design give it sort of a cool um, industrial look while having a nice light colour to them. We've got artificial lights in the studio and we need to make sure we have a light ceiling so it bounces the light down and gives us a nice muted tone for the, uh, for the shot. For the floor we put down this garage um, interlocking mat system. Super hard wearing, we've dropped a ton of stuff on it, just bounces. But also it works really well for uh, improving the sound quality in this room so we've got a nice um, insulated roof and now a nice insulated floor. So after the floor we had to think about what we're going to do with the walls. It's not a massive space in here so we've gone for this slat wall system which saves space by hanging the tools in there. They're good for grabbing tools quickly and also it looks pretty cool. So the real standout piece in our studio has got to be the uh, neon sign behind us. This is where we've got all our ideas for the neon signage just from this one initial idea. This was supplied to us by Visual Group, they specialise in this sort of neon work, and they've made this sign using the same MDF that was on the walls, but they've actually inlaid it with our logo, which I supplied to them. feature in the studio is being able to turn the lights on and off with our Alexa system. There are tons and tons of videos on YouTube showing you cool things you can do with your um, smart speakers. We've really gone for like just basics for now. We're going to try to uh, do more on this in the future but if I say something like Alexa studio off. Okay. She'll turn the lights off. Alexa action. On the same Alexa system, she will actually turn the air conditioning off. So not only will our neon sign come on, but that AC unit will turn off. Again, it's all about improving sound quality in the studio. She'll also, if I say, 
Alexa, studio on. Okay. She'll turn on the overhead lights. We never shoot with the overhead lights. It's going to be far too overexposed now. Alexa, action. We are about to start recording. Break a leg. But as I say, that Alexa is a total work in progress at the moment. So stay tuned, we might have some more on this. So behind me, you can see some of the projects that we've been working on. We'd love to get all the um, projects we've created in the studio, but it would not be physically possible. So we've got things like the metal garage sign. We've got our Genghis Khan knife here. Our Tiki clock girl, she lives over there. The studio is getting so full, we're gonna have to start getting rid of some of this stuff as more projects come in. So definitely stay tuned for some of the giveaways. If you think you might like some of these projects, let us know in the comments box below. We're definitely up for giving some of this stuff away. So one of the first things we made for the channel was this laser engraved garage stool. It was just a shop brought one. We've taken the top off it, we've sanded it down, we've laser engraved our logo, and then we've finished it in a nice hard wearing varnish. Make sure you watch that video on the channel because that's a cool little one. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the lighting system that we use in the studio. As I mentioned, we've got overhead lighting, but we'd never use that for shooting a video. It's far too harsh. So we've got two consistent lights here uh, with soft boxes on to soften the light. I like to point one of the lights up at the roof, bounce the light down, and also one a bit more directly at the workbench, keep it quite soft. So as well as our consistent lights in the studio, we also use these LED NAN lights. They are really cool for adding a cast of colour. They're magnetic, so I'll pop them in, in a shot like that, cast a different hue on what we're filming. It makes the shot a bit more interesting. But if I'm honest, we mostly use them for neutral light in a dark space when we're filming, just to bring the shot up a bit. So when we're shooting in the studio, I like to use three cameras where I can. Camera one, camera two, and camera three. Camera one and camera two are Canon mirrorless cameras, uh, and camera three is a GoPro. I've got a couple of GoPros. If Andy's filming something on his own and I can't make it, he'll shoot on a GoPro, and we'll also use them for time lapses. On camera one, we've got a 24 to 105 f4 lens it's amazing use it for 90 percent of the shots and on the camera two we've got a 50 mil lens i think it's a 1.8 which is super fast a really cool for a shallow depth of field shot and also works fine for a second shot there's a third lens we use which is a 14 mil it's mega wide i'll use that if me and andy are in a really tight space i want to get a wide shot of a room if I'm honest, the zoom lens is the lens that I use most. And the final really important piece of equipment we use are road mics. We have a couple of lapel mics on wireless transmitters, and then we have a shotgun mic. The lapel mics are obviously used for micing up people like myself and Andy, or a person he might be interviewing. They'll both go into a mixer, which is on top of the A camera, can adjust the levels, uh, really get a good sound quality. And the shotgun mic, if I'm honest, we mostly use it for background sounds. If we've got a car driving past, we want to get a nice audio clip of that. Uh, and also living on the second camera so we can synchronize the audio in Premiere Pro and get our shots together. So after we finish filming, get back, we download our shots and we edit them in Premiere Pro. There's so many good guys on how to use Premiere Pro on YouTube if you get stuck. So yeah, that sums up the inside of our studio. I'll give you a little tour of the outside, which looks pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope it gave you some inspiration on setting up your own YouTube studio. The most important things are the lighting and the audio, which can be done uh, relatively cheaply. Let us know if you've got any questions in the comments box below. And if you enjoyed this video, as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.